So here it is. I know a bunch of you guys have been asking and it honestly has taken too long to release this, but today we are going to talk about maxing stats through the fusion loop. This process can be a bit complicated and I'm undergoing the assumption that you will be near the end of your first playthrough or new game plus because this does require a little bit of money as well as a little bit of persona points if you want to speed up the process. Also, if you have questions or problems even after this video, the comment section is your friend, but if you want a more immediate response, my discord link will be in the description below and it will be the quickest way to get to me, and if not me, there are plenty of very knowledgeable people in there that I'm sure wouldn't mind answering. That being said, a couple requirements before we start this video. First, you will need about 300,000 yen. If you know this amount, it's okay, this is an overestimate for me anyways, and you can go farming for money in the middle of the process. Second, you will probably need around 500,000 persona points so you can speed up the process, but don't worry, you will be earning more than you spend in this loop, but you also can do it without the persona points, just once again, it will take a little while longer. Lastly, be far enough into the game to unlock stat boosting with persona points. Once you have these things, we can begin. So on screen is the fusion loop itself, and in the beginning you don't have to use persona points, but in the event that you do, I generally put enough persona points to reach 20 stat points in each category for both the jack-o'-lantern and pixie. This is simply because it is relatively cheap and retains a good persona points to stats ratio. This will then create a bicorn which will inherit some of the stats that you put into both the pixie and the jack-o'-lantern. Now as you follow the loop into Silky, Succubus, Wapo, and so on and so forth, notice that I highlighted the pixie's name. And that is because you can pour persona points to raise the stats of every persona in this loop to speed up the process. However, oftentimes it will be too expensive and therefore I found that pouring points just into the pixie is probably the best value since she just doesn't seem to cost as much as the others. But again, if you have persona points to spare, hey, that saves you time. And that's pretty much it. Just go through the fusions until you land in the jack-o'-lantern, then continue the loop until you hit max stats or whenever you're content. Also, whenever you boost a persona stats with persona points, make sure to not save the persona into the compendium as that will make fusion costs increase. Not to mention, I believe it also affects the stats gained through fusion, but don't quote me on that. With that said, there are a couple questions that I feel people might have, so the following bit of the video will cover what I believe to be the most common FAQs. Starting with, what do you do once you have a max persona? Well, this max persona will be the base for whatever you wish to fuse it into. For example, let's take the fusion route of a Black Frost. If we wanted to fuse a Black Frost, you can use this fusion loop to acquire a jack o' lantern to fuse it with a king frost and a jack frost and it will transfer the stats from this jack o' lantern to the black frost but understand that this fusion loop black frost you have just crafted is the new base for future fusions meaning that you have to find a path to get your black frost to the next target persona before you fuse off the Black Frost into whatever else you want to fuse, make sure to register it into a compendium so that way you keep your max stats Black Frost to be able to resummon later. Then you can proceed without fear of losing that Black Frost. Next, so what do I do about a fusion accident? Well, let's say that you get a fusion accident because let's be honest, this loop is going to repeat for a while and it's basically inevitable. The goal would be to find a fusion path back into one of the personas in the fusion loop. For example, if I was fusing Jack-O-Lantern and Pixie and somehow got a fusion accident that led me to getting a Ganesha, first, rejoice and be happy that you got this fusion accident, as this will give you a lot of bonus stats that you otherwise would have had to fuse for more loops or pay persona points to acquire. Second, you then should look at the fusion calculator to see how to get it back into the a persona from the fusion loop. The quickest way for this example, aka Ganesha, would be to fuse it into a Mithras, then to a Kikurihime, then to our Silky. Once we have Silky, since she is in the fusion loop, we would continue to fuse a Succubus, since that is the next persona in the loop, all the while maintaining the accident's boosted stats. From there, just continue on as usual. Basically, every time a fusion accident happens, consider it to be a shortcut, and just find a way back to fuse into the loop. What happens? If I resummon my persona with max stats, will it kill over the stats? No, unfortunately, the stat transfer doesn't seem to retain after registration to the compendium. Meaning that, for example, once I have my maxed out Black Frost recalled from the compendium, not from the fusion loop, and then fuse it into a high pixie, it won't maintain the maxed out stats. So take that example again, our boy Black Frost, and say that you had maxed out his stats from the fusion loop, 
that fusion loop black frost will be the key to maintaining max stats and if you don't want to start this fusion loop over you have to find a way to fuse this black frost into whatever you want then that new persona you fuse from the fusion loop black frost will be the new fusion loop persona for example let's say you got the fusion loop black frost and somehow found a fusion path that gets it to a yoshitsune then you now have to treat that fusion loop yoshitsune as the next ingredient for the build you want to make so basically the fusion loop persona must always be the base ingredient and while this might make fusions complicated it is the only way to make sure that inherited stats will continue to transfer now there are some soft caveats that you have to pay attention to this fusion loop persona will keep its fusion loop inheritance as long as it's not deleted or removed from your party once you lose this persona you will then have to start the loop over regardless if you have registered it or not lastly why do some personas just refuse to get max stats honestly i wish i had an answer to this as i couldn't quite figure it out myself for some reason some personas just had random stats like agility and luck hitting a cap at like 85 and in some cases since this method will generate an overabundance of persona points you can just finish it off by dumping persona points to max out their stats unfortunately that is the best solution that i have come up with but personally if there's something i missed just be on the lookout for potential solutions and in conclusion this process is not too difficult but seeing that there aren't too many guides on it i can understand why it can be a bit hard to follow and i do know that this video is perhaps on the shorter concise side so if i'd missed anything or made a mistake please let me know so i can just perhaps with a comment on that note thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and i will see you all in the next one